Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly discourse for you um, with this little guy right here. This is the TRM Atom. I'm sorry, this is the Neutron, not the Atom. The Atom is uh, bigger than this. And uh, the topic today is, Nick, how often do you actually have to disassemble your knives? Uh, that's a really excellent question. Um, honestly, uh, the, the, the answer to that is when you see that there's a problem. Um, in practice, I am insane. I mean, many of you have already figured this out. Oh, that's right. This has the Phillips head. <laughs> that's right. Uh, anyways, uh, many of you have figured this out already, no doubt, and that's that's okay. But um, I'm a little bit crazy. Uh, I disassemble my knives maybe on a more regular basis, especially when I'm trying to do disassembly discourses like these. Um, that, that tends to provoke a little bit more uh, disassembly than is, strictly speaking, necessary. But nonetheless, um, in practice, in my experience, when you've been carrying a knife for a while, or in some cases when you've not been carrying it for a while, but some of the lubrication is draw, uh, dried up or something like that, or maybe things have been gummed up, you know, gunked up, that's when you're going to need to actually take, a, take your knife apart. But most of the time, honestly, you can get away without it. And there were knives that are going to be a little bit more robust to things. You know, for instance, I think, uh, you know, ball bearings tend to do a little bit better when they are not lubricated, because, you know, many people would argue that they don't need lubrication ever. I don't necessarily agree with that, but... um. Well, I mean, they don't need it, but uh, whether you want to have it or not, that's sort of a different question. Ah, free spinning pivot. That's right. Uh, hold on. Come here. But anyways, um, a, a ball bearing style pivot is generally going to be, you know, a little bit better without the lubrication running on versus phosphobron. No, I don't want that. Uh, phosphobrons, which might, you know, cause a little bit more in the way of difficulty. But at the same time, you know, look, at some level, um, it, 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 there is a school of thought within watchmaking. And I don't necessarily subscribe to this school of thought, but that says, uh, well, you should restore your watch, or uh, you should send your watch in for repairs when it stops keeping good time. And that's sort of my my opinion, though, I, I, in the watch world, it's a little scary because, for instance, seals and whatnot, uh, you know, rubber seals rather than harbor seals, just for those of you who are curious. Um, but either way, the seals might uh, actually fail long before the uh, the timekeeping goes south, and so you might end up really hurting your watch if you don't go that route. But in the, in the knife world, it's absolutely, that's kind of my approach, right? It's like, okay, well, if the, the, the knife is running fine, if it's deploying easily, uh, if, the, if there's no sign of any issues, then by God, you know, keep it running. Um, but that said, um, there were a couple of things that make me more likely to do that. One of the things that makes me very regular disassemble a pocket knife um, that, that is running okay is when I've sharpened it. And specifically when I've sharpened it using diamond stones. Um, the, the reason I say that is very often as you do so, um, you'll get little tiny bits of diamond dust that get into there. And especially uh, in specifically the, um, the, the, if they've got bearings, getting into the bearings, that diamond dust is not a, a beautiful thing. And uh, perhaps even more so than the bearings um, on the detent ball. Uh, you can very easily scratch up the inside of the knife if you've done some sharpening. And so very often if you've done like a serious sharpen where you're hogging off some material, etc., or especially if you're using brand new stones, it might not be a bad idea to consider doing some resharpen or uh, some uh, disassembly after you finish. This is part of the reason too that some folks will actually do the dis, uh, do their sharpening of a blade that's sort of out of the knife, but that's its own problem because you have to hold it right. But anyways, so that's one of the reasons to disassemble a knife. Another one is actually sticky substances, right? Um, you know, for instance, uh, you know, this could be the case, or if you just get it dirty more widely. But uh, for me, at least, you know, a, a little bit of water or something like that, it's not going to be the end of the world. But if that water is actually orange juice or something like that. If, if you accidentally spill something like that, you know, obviously the knife's going to keep running fine, especially if it's on phosphor bronze. It ain't going to matter so badly. But at the same time, dude, um, you know, there, there, there were ways uh, you should get probably get in there and clean that out. Uh, apples, too, tend to produce a... Um, a little bit of trouble in that way. I, I, I'm just sort of of the mind that anytime you get something super sticky in there, it's oftentimes not a bad idea to clean that out. I mean, you can, of course, uh, cheat it a little bit. For instance, you can just run some water through the inside of the knife. Um, this is fine, if you, especially if it's a knife that's really built with rust resistance in mind, then you're not going to really hurt anything. But uh, generally speaking, I don't know, I, maybe I'm old fashioned, or maybe I just really like disassembling a pocket knife. Um, but in practice, I, I, I tend to go the route of just, oh, just take the damn thing apart. 
get it all cleaned up, get it running beautifully. Um, so that can be an issue. The other one is, is like I said, super long-term storage. It really depends on the kind of oil that you're using, etc. And I'm not saying it's going to like break down to an extent that it's dangerously low or anything. No, absolutely freaking not. Um, in general, in generally speaking, that's not English. Um, but in general, you will, um, generally speaking, be able to go a, a good long while, but there have definitely been times where I've taken something, especially something that's been uh, either on loan potentially or just that I really haven't carried in a long time. I'll take it out. I'll realize, wow, this is running a little rough, and then I'll, I'll want to actually um, you know, take the guy apart. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you here. The biggest reason that I end up taking my knives apart on a regular basis, and this will shock approximately nobody, but the biggest reason for me to take a knife apart is actually because I want to. I enjoy doing this. Um, for me, taking something small like this apart is sort of, it's analogous, and I'm not saying, by the way, what I am not saying here is, look at me, I'm a knife maker, but it scratches the same itch as making something, and I am at my heart, I think, a little bit of a maker, right? Um, I tend to be a person who will, on a regular basis, try and build things when I can, you know, and I, I'm getting, you know, a little better at that. I finally have a freaking workshop, at my new, not workshop, shop, in a, but workshop, work shop, uh, in an attempt to, uh, you know, be able to do that a little bit more often. But it sort of gives me the feeling of having improved something. And this sort of very finicky labor here is, I don't know, it's, it's therapeutic in some way. And so for me, actually, taking something apart like this can be a part of my self-care. Um, you know, especially when I'm doing these videos, that it, it, it gives me yet another excuse and reason to do it. But in practice, um, you know, there have definitely been times where I've had a day and I come home, or in this case, <laughs> lately, I stay home and I say, you know what, I need to take something apart. And so I'll go through my knife box and I'll, I'll figure out, okay, what hasn't gotten some love lately? And I'll, I'll just get it all cleaned up and I'll usually do this offline, so to speak. But it, it still, it brings me some joy. It, it makes me, it gives me the ability to make something run a little bit better. And to me, at least, that's that's a 100% a, a win. I'm a big, big fan of that. So um, I, I really, I guess the answer to your question, a uh, kind viewer, actually, a viewer emailed me and gave this idea. I don't remember his name offhand, but you know who you are, and thank you for the idea. But nonetheless, um, I, my general feelings are, A, when the knife starts running rough, that's when you know you absolutely need to do it. Um, B, when you've exposed it, there's something that could actually harm things on the inside there. So like a lot of diamond dust uh, could definitely do something like that. Uh, or C, the other one is when you've got like a very sticky uh, situation going on. Um, and that can be another thing, because even if it feels fine at that moment, uh, there's a good chance it can gum up in there, and you could have yourself a problem later on. Um, but of course, the calculus is going to be a little bit different for every knife, right? There are going to be knives out there in the world that I really desperately do not want to disassemble. Uh, the Spydeco Delica is one of them. It's just a complete pain in the neck to take apart. Um, a great knife, absolutely horrible for disassembly. Um, and it's for exactly one reason, a plastic backspacer. Um, that's a major problem. The uh, the the other ones uh, with the metal spaces, that's fine. Urban knives, I like urban knives a lot. Um, they, they, they're great, uh, except that they freaking suck to disassemble. The guy does things like putting screws underneath the clip and, and lots of loose bearings. They're just a total pain in my neck. Uh, to take apart. And so it's just not something I'm super in love with. And other knives with great complexity, the CRKT, um, oh, what the heck's the name of that thing? Uh, the Shock uh, is yet another knife that I think is just super complex, and I don't know that it needs to be. And so that one's a pain in the neck to take apart. And so I might try and dodge the disassembly there a little bit more. But when I've got something very simple, very easy, it's real thing. It's straightforward to just say, oh, yeah, sure, I'll pop it open. Um, I know I'm not going to hurt anything. Um, it'll run better at the end of it. And this knife, by the way, got put on the table because I popped it open and realized, wow, action's a little slower than I'd like, which means that chances are either a little bit of gunk has gotten in there because, you know, in practice, look, there's a... Uh, as you're carrying something, it's going to pick up lint, it's going to pick up gunk, etc. Um, but, you know, this just jumped out at me as, you know what, I need to do, uh, I can improve this. So, yeah, that's kind of my approach. That's my feeling. Um, the time that you do not, uh, you absolutely do not, not even the slightest little bit, need to take a knife apart 
is when you just get it from the factory. Now, this is something that I do all the time on the channel, but I am wrong. I am doing this, you know, the, the, the idea of taking the knife out of the box and doing the disassembly, sometimes on a very, very low-end budget-focused knife. And if you're curious, by the way, about the tools I'm using, nickshabazz.com slash tools. But on a, a, a very budget-focused knife, you can sometimes do better. Um, you can sometimes improve the action relative to what the factory did. That can be nice, actually. That can feel great. But in practice, especially for higher end pieces, it shipped fine. You're okay. You can give it a good long time before you take it apart because, well, that's just gonna, you're reducing the chance of stripping screws, etc. I take everything apart because A, I have a problem and B, it's a part of the channel, right? It's, you know, uh, people, I, I take knives apart, not just for my own edification and my own joy and self-care, but also just, you know, so people can see what's inside it. So that makes a little bit more sense for me, but I would think, wow, that just got smoother. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, but I think for a lot of folks, that's not really a crucial step. So anyways, there you go. Um, that That's my take on that very interesting question. Thank you very much for the uh, video idea, and I hope you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.